John McLaughlin. He's a former CIA deputy director, now an MSNBC national security analyst. He was one of the five former intelligence officials who wrote a letter today to congressional leaders urging them to, quote, resist efforts to politicize intelligence oversight. Mr. McLaughlin joins me now. I would say you want them to resist. Is it too late? I think resistance seems futile at this point. They haven't resisted. I guess you're hoping that they will stop. Here's what we we're really saying, Chuck. We we're really saying in that uh, letter, could you just behave normally? What does that mean? You know, what is that? Well, uh, you know, those of us who've been involved in intelligence a long time have been through a lot of counterintelligence investigations. And we've been through, I've personally been through, a lot of Gang of Eight no not notifications. Mm -hmm. Gang of Eight being the congressional leadership to include the Intelligence Committee, mm -hmm. chairman and vice chairman. And typically this is done on um, a bipartisan basis. And why is that important? Well, you know, the American public has to have confidence that the most sensitive activities of the U.S. government, FBI, CIA, National Security Agency, that these things are being done appropriately, legally, effectively, and that's what these committees are for, and they have to be done bipartisan, on a bipartisan basis, or I think justifiably the American public will say, well, what's going on here? Are people Correct playing me if games? I'm wrong. The reason we have these norms, <clears throat> and frankly, some of them are more than norms, that this is the way it's done, was because there were some trust issues with the CIA back in the 60s and 70s. Absolutely. They did. This is the, the famous church committee. Absolutely. These committees were created in 1976 and 1977. And the deal was the people on these committees are going to be serious people in Congress. They will get everything that the intelligence community produces in return for their good judgment, critical at times, mm -hmm. and their discretion on a bipartisan basis. And it has worked that way most of the time, not all of the time, but I think with the Nunes memo back in February, he drove a big stake right through the heart of this process. And every time we see something like this happen, it's pounded in a little deeper. This feels on the House end a bit unrecoverable right now. Um, I don't have a good, I mean, I have, I have. It's asked, recoverable. I've asked, I, I think the Senate is proving that you can do this yes. still. Yes. Um, but I don't know on the House side. Why do you believe it's recoverable? Well, it's side? recoverable. A lot of partisanship over there. Well, it's recoverable with leadership. And I only say that it's recoverable. You think so? Where's Paul Ryan and Nancy Pelosi here? I don't understand. I'm talking about new leadership. Oh, because <laughs> okay. I don't understand why the two of them, I've asked this question to multiple leaders. Mm -hmm. Why haven't the two of them essentially grabbed newness and shift by the ears and says, guys, stop this? Well, I think uh, part of the problem is that newness is just not going to stop. I mean, I have no personal animus toward uh, Congressman Nunes, but just observing his behavior, um, this is the kind of thing that ruins this process. The reason I think it's recoverable is I have seen it work well at times. If you went back a couple generations on this committee mm -hmm. to the time when Congressman Mike Rogers was heading it sure. and his deputy was Dutch Ruppersberger from Maryland, they actually called people like me down before they took their jobs and we sat down with them and they asked, how can we do this in a bipartisan way? And we told them, and they did it. And I think most people in the intelligence business would say, now, that was a different leadership, mm -hmm. uh, a different time, but these leaderships will turn over. So my point is to you, Chuck, yeah. it has to be fixed. There's no doubt. I guess the question is, who does it? You, you say new leadership has to do it. I, Speaker Ryan just isn't going to do it. Um, and if they don't do it's it, what happens? It's a great failure by Speaker Ryan because this is extremely important to the country. It's right to me, uh, maybe it, I'm seeing it too close because I'm yeah. a former intelligence person, but it seems to me it's right at the heart of our national security because the kinds of things that are done by the intelligence community are essential to everything we're doing now, North Korea, Iran, right. everything. This hit a weird a sweet spot. It's a terrible word to use here, but it, here, it hit a weird s sweet spot, this um, Trump and these conspiracy theories, because you're already dealing with a group of people who've been skeptical of government most of their life, these right. voters, right? So they're already skeptical of all of it. And right. frankly, the Intelligence Committee has the black eye of the WMDs on their, you know, on, on their, on their right. resume. So you already have sort of this, um, this sort of seated audience ready to believe right. a conspiracy. How do we get that back? What do you guys need to do? There's one thing, we have to reform the process in Congress. What should the intelligence community do to try to win back some credibility? Well, I think there's a couple things you can do on the intelligence side, though you're limited. I mean, you can't go out there and advocate for yourself. No, that's the... You're, you're not a politician. Right. Uh, the things you have to do are very simple, really. You have to do the best job you can. 
you have to have a committee where you can go for no-fault discussions mm -hmm. and have a discussion with them about how you can do better. And, and, uh, and intelligence leaders uh, need to speak out publicly, not about the secrets of the intelligence business, but about why it's important, how it works, why we obey the law, why we think this process is important in Congress, why they are the representatives of the American people looking at what we're doing. That's the heart of the process right, right there. And, uh, but ultimately, the current leadership of Congress is, is failing on this. So I, I don't frankly put that you're, you're correct uh, that uh, intelligence has made mistakes. Yeah. Let's face it. That's right. It, it's, and the politicians are going to make sure that, and to deflect well, their own blame, well, that the Intelligence Committee there sometimes are gets two more kinds blame. of outcomes in Washington policy successes and intelligence failures. I've now, we understand that. Yeah. And, uh, and I could sit here and take your viewers' time listing all of the intelligence successes that have occurred, right. which are impressive. But, but that's not the important thing here. I mean, the important thing is. Um, uh, to take your point, that there, there, I think that here's the problem. Yes, the audience is kind of seated yeah. to expect uh, the worst uh, from intelligence. It's done by Hollywood. It's done by everyone else. But this is where the president is failing. He's feeding that. Right. He's feeding that. And uh, you know, I know smart people who know better, uh, who are starting to say, well, you know. Maybe the FBI is screwing up here. How is that happening? Do you believe these people are truly honest in their newfound beliefs or that they've just they're going along for the ride? Look, I've spent a lot of time working on authoritarian governments and how dictators come to power. Yeah. There's a couple things going on here. If you take a public that is distracted, that has other things, that's trying to just lead their lives, which is America, what most, which is what most people are doing. Mm -hmm. And you have a leader, someone they've elected, repeating something over and over and over again. They don't have time to parse all of the details. It starts to sink in, and before long, the lie becomes the truth, and the truth tellers start telling the lie. And so that's the danger here, I think. That's the danger I think we see going on. Well, that's, um, I hope it means more from some viewers coming from you than when we're saying it, too. I mean, that's the thing. You're an expert in this. That's what it feels like to some of us as well. Anyway, John McLaughlin, thanks for coming on, sharing your views. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC MTP and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.